Hi, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us today at uh, this session of PMT India Learning. My name is Rajneesh Negi, and I once again welcome all of you on a Sunday morning for a wonderful session. I would uh, request that if the audience they are joining, if they can just put a thumbs, thumbs up or something so that we know that you are here and we'll start the session. Right, so people have started to join us. Thank you. Good morning, and thank you so much. Uh, I can see Priyanka is there. Welcome, welcome, Madhurima. Guys, if you are there, just if you can just write your name so that we know that you have joined or a hi. Okay, so good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us uh, with us. Uh, today we are here to talk, to talk about a very interesting topic, a very basic topic uh, that we as a product managers, we as brand managers, we have faced in our daily work. work. Uh, what happens is that uh, when, whenever we are preparing some uh, communication for a brand, uh, we most of the time uh, we refer to the Google for the scientific references. And the most common tendency that is there is that we Google about uh, our brand, our molecule, and whatever the first scientific reference comes, we take it. And we mostly what we do is we read the abstract and read the conclusion. And whatever is, uh, if we find something which is uh, appreciating our brand, we take out that line and we paste it as a scientific reference. And in the, term, in the name of reference, we take that uh, website link that this is the reference, right? So let me tell you that this is a this, this is not the right technique because what happens is how it shows us that when we go into the field and when we are interacting with the doctors, so the, the field person is also seeing the same thing as the product manager. And uh, it, it is because that we being as a in, into marketing, into brand management, we are not thorough with our references. So it, it's an it's an art. To first of all search the right uh, thing for your brand, and then it's it's an artwork. And today we have the artist himself over here. Uh, I welcome my friend uh, Mr. Amit Khanna today for this Facebook live session. Amit, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Rajneesh Pai. Thank right. you so much. Amit, Amit is Amit is a brand professional. He is a very passionate traveler. And uh, what is more important is that he has a very, very high passion for teaching. So he, he is not only here for today's webinar. Apart from this, he keeps himself engaged by uh, giving free lectures to a lot of students out there. Be it they, are, they, are, they are in school and colleges. And uh, he, this is all because of his passion that he has taken up this topic to share his experiences about that, how to read and derive the correct insights for your brands. So over to Amit now. Amit, please take us through the topic. Thank you, Rajneesh Bhai. Thank you so much. So as you rightly said, nowadays, uh, you know, uh, when you search anything, so information is too much. Uh, before that, uh, my, my hi to all the listeners, so all the audience out there. And uh, thank you for taking out the time in this Sunday to come over to this platform, PMT India platform which is an excellent platform uh, for all these sessions, which I've also attended earlier. 
so friends uh, nowadays we all know that we are too much overloaded uh, with the information you type any search term in the google and you get millions of pages out there and for that matter if you type something in the pubmed to search a scientific literature you will get thousands of articles now the question comes out of the even if you narrow your search to the recently published articles for example the articles published in 2020 you will get hundreds of articles even published for that molecule or for that topic itself and it's it's you know practically impossible to read all those 100 articles so first thing is to select the right article to read and then comes the second point that how you will critically read that article now critically read the reading that article is very important why because uh, yes once we read the article critically we come to know what all cream is available there to market it friends we all are in the marketing profession and we are in the pharma marketing profession where science is our background if you have to say we have to market science we have to understand science first right so uh, what we will do is we i will take you through a very small presentation about the selection of the article how to critically read an article how an article you know what are the uh, uh, if you see a typical organization of an article and which portion tells you what of that article and i'll tell you how to critically read that article and uh, towards the end of the session once i will do this i will take you through uh, other search engines other than the pubmed and i will tell you Uh, like pubmed is a very old search engine now the latest search engines which are coming they are organizing your search they are hierarching your search uh, they are doing most of the job for you but the thing is we need to know these platforms so i'll be introducing five platforms most of you some of you may be knowing it for some of you it may be new so we'll go through that and I then know. i will yeah and then i will be uh, taking you through some of the pubmed hacks so that okay. pubmed hacks will tell you how to narrow down your search or how to widen your search okay how to include what all that you are looking so that you can save time while searching okay so you can strike uh, while you are searching we have in the mind what i am what i want to search and we can immediately get the first 3 4 is what we are looking for rather than using anything there out there in the google and in the last uh, there is be a surprise so i will be sharing one platform yeah one platform through which you will be able to you know download all the articles uh, free of cost so this is how my whole whole presentation will be uh, structured great so shall i start rajnish bhai yeah please so i am sharing my screen is it visible my ppt yes yes it is visible it's visible love it fine friends so let's go through uh, the presentation very quickly uh, so as i mentioned uh, the the question which will be answering in today's presentation will be how one can choose an article read it purposefully effectively and systematically this is what uh, the whole question is today and already i said lot of information is there but getting the right knowledge is what we are looking for so friends when we search any article no when you type anything in the pubmed for example diabetes migraine or whatever is your uh, you know therapy area or your molecule you get lot of indexing of the you get lot of articles as a search results so first thing is we have to understand what i am looking for am i looking for a primary literature or am i looking for a secondary literature now what is a primary literature a uh, primary literature is the literature where you get the primary data the first data a new clinical trial okay any clinical trial the results of that clinical trial that comes under your primary literature some authors have done certain survey and they have published the results of that survey this is your primary literature case reports and case series become make the part of the primary literature some conference has held somewhere and the proceedings and the abstracts of that conference make the primary literature likewise editorial correspondence and letters to the editor so this all becomes the part of the primary literature now as per my experience once you market the science the primary literature is very important because that is an opportunity where you share something new with your customers because you get some new data to share with them the new insights to share with them 
now uh, there are certain authors uh, who do who uh, like for example if i talk about the valproic acid now in valproic acid if you find the clinic research articles uh, if i find the clinical trials there are many clinical trials on the valproic acid now some of the authors what they do they study all those clinical trials and then they review those clinical trials now these reviews becomes the secondary literature so that reviews may be the narrative reviews which are not organized it is as per the author's will then we have the systematic reviews where they discuss with you everything starting from the disease to the diagnosis to the latest you know whatever the therapy is there to the latest surgical so they will give you all insights from the very beginning to the updated in, uh, to the latest in a systematic review then you have the review of the reviews which makes the part of a meta analysis you have the review of the books guidelines and commentary now uh, once you take the meta analysis for example if we if so show that forest plots plots to our customers the meta analysis now meta analysis uh, most of the doctors they are convinced some of them they are not convinced they say that it is just a statistical play of the data so but then it is how we market that data is very important in that case now so coming to the point how to choose the right article it depends on what are you looking for right if i am a researcher so uh, after this i will be telling you how to choose the right article when we are in the marketing this is just uh, for researchers so what are you looking for so if a researcher is looking for an idea for a research a new idea for research so original research articles control trials okay clinical trials experimental studies and all these are what he has to look for if a doctor is looking for or if a researcher is looking for something like a diagnosis area the therapy area or a prognosis of a certain disease then the reviews textbooks case series and the case reports and the conference proceedings is what gives them more insights and if we want to look uh, for a topic overview or the updates on a certain therapy or a certain molecule then we have to start from the narrative reviews systematic reviews or from the meta analysis that gives you such a deep insight of uh, from the very beginning to to till date about that particular topic right now choosing the right article when we are in a marketing perspective i'm telling you friends we have two or three conditions when we work either you get a new portfolio we get a new molecule to launch or we get a new division to launch we get a totally new therapy okay in that case my suggestion is we have to start with a systematic review for example if i get a new migraine portfolio to handle okay and till now i was handling the anxiolytic portfolio so migraine if i get a certain molecule if i start searching from the molecule probably i will not be able to connect this molecule fits where in that disease spectrum okay so first thing is first you read a latest systematic review of that particular disease it will give you an idea of what has happened to that what is that disease what is the prevalence okay and then what are all therapies available what the guideline says what the landmark clinical trial says so in that case we have to start with the systematic review we'll get the idea of that and the plus point of reading that systematic review is you need not to search in the google what are the landmark clinical trial say for example valproic acid okay if you are reading a good systematic review it it must have mentioned all landmark clinical trials in that systematic review and there you will get half of your job is done you will get all your clinical land trials mentioned in that with a comment on that so you'll get the list of all those landmark clinical trials so you know now what is epilepsy you know now what is the what are the different molecules available you know now what are the different clinical trials available so you get uh, all the insights for that new molecule or that new disease by reading a systematic review then you can go to the individual clinical trial individual and you can further read that article then most of the times we have a set portfolio throughout the year on on existing portfolio every quarter and the next year we need to find some new articles everybody wants ki isme naya kya what is new in that what is the new point you have incorporated in this visual aid or what is the new for for you to talk to your customers so if you want to update on the existing portfolio okay then definitely we have to look for the latest research articles guides and all those things but friends the thing is nowadays time is the currency we miss the opportunity and the competitor will take up that opportunity for example if today sitting on 29th november while we are discussing the uh, in this conference a new uh, clinical article favoring valproic acid has published 
and i will go to the office on monday and monday i will be busy with my routine work and i will search this thing on wednesday by the time a company will float this thing to the doctors and you will miss this opportunity to be the first so how i can be the first one to get that latest update about this molecule i will tell you this in my pubmed hacks one okay so you will get directly the information of the latest article published as soon as it is published in your mail okay and then periodically every month try to read one latest review of your therapy so you will not be missing about any new update of your molecule or your therapy so there is an art of reading art of thinking always an art of writing so friends now whenever you look to any research article any research you must have read uh, hundreds of articles by now every article most of the times i say almost all the times a research article it is arranged in the following fashion it has a title it has an abstract which gives you a brief overview of the article followed by the introduction which gives you the background then they have the methods how the research is done followed by the results followed by discussion and conclusion and then the references so this is the set fashion now the question comes when we are reading the article we are doing it for so many years so what the new i am going to tell you friends reading and critical reading is are two different things what i am going to tell you while reading anything we have to try to answer few questions once we get answer to that questions means i am done with the section and i have taken the maximum uh, points out of that section so a cardinal rule for reading any research article is don't just download any article and start it reading from the beginning to the end and after one and one or two hours i will find that this article is not useful probably the number of subjects used were very less the research is done on uh, while reading the article i come to know that the number of subjects are only 100 which doesn't makes a clinical relevance so don't start reading an article from beginning to the end now first you have to read the conclusions of the study by reading the title and the abstract read the title read the abstract find if it is interesting or useful if it is there if you find that it makes sense then we read the entire article so uh, whether this article is for me or not you read the abstract summary and conclusion portion you find whether it has a clear cut aims and objectives it has a well defined research hypothesis and are the conclusions precise is the answer to the end whatever the research question was there in the end whether they answered the question properly the research should not end indecisively it should not end without answering the question and it should not end ki more of the research is needed to answer the question properly it should have answered it to the statistically significant and clinical to the point of clinical significance so are the conclusions precise and is the above information is what i am looking for yes if you get these two yes you read the entire article so how to read the abstract now abstract is the point which gives us answer whether we should read the entire article or not so while reading the abstract you try to check these three points if you have all these three points tick means this article is for you what was the study about are you able to make out the main objective from the abstract is this is this article talking about the role of valproic acid in reducing the migraine frequency so what was the article about you read that are you getting the main objective then try to make out why and how was the study conducted so if it is a prospective study doctors usually appreciate the prospective study which is well designed rather than the pms study which is retrospective and based on the whatever data available and the statistical game into that data so at the uh, first i have to be very clear if i have 20 articles to choose from and if i have a option to choose a prospective trial okay and uh, if the abstract is telling me that it is a retrospective trial or is a post marketing surveillance probably i will give it a pause and i will go to the next article where which may be a prospective one then i have to see the design of the article is it a randomized trial is a placebo controlled trial done on a single center single center trial or is a multi center okay so this all will give you a idea of the strength of the study once i get the idea of the strength of the study i can take up the full article now the subjects the number of subjects taken the age and sex this idea usually we get from the abstract so we this gives us an idea if the study is done on 50 or 100 subjects and another abstract it is the study is done on maybe around 1000 or maybe 500 subjects 
probably i will use a study which is done on the more number of population which gives more weightage to what i will be discussing later with my customers now if i want to uh, target a molecule to certain age okay if it is not for the pediatric but if uh, the age is saying somewhat else so these are all the filters which gives us the idea what are the outcomes measured are we going to talk about these outcomes are we interested in these outcomes while we are marketing our molecule this idea you will usually get from the abstract and the results are they decisive are they indecisive are the results of this trial positive negative or neutral then based on your objective you can pick up that article now coming to the part of the introduction now introduction friends you just remember of an article which you have read recently i recently read an article on epilepsy on the role of valproic acid in epilepsy so usually if you see na introduction how it is designed the first three lines tell you about the big problem for example you now you may see diabetic research a diabetic article it will say diabetes is this much uh, problem it is worldwide these many prevalence is there okay so what authors try to do is they try to give you the significance of doing the research in the introduction so they try to give you how big the problem is so that big problem and then they try to give you the gap uh, whatever the studies are done till date so whatever studies are done they will give k this at all have done this study and they have found this thing so they will give very mention they will tell in very brief because what the authors are trying to make a case is that what i am going to do has not been done previously and this is what is going to give you the confidence and help you understand how important this article is for you so whenever you are reading an introduction try to find answer to these five questions okay what was the research problem if you don't get answer to if you don't get the research problem uh, uh, research problem you know uh, very clearly in the introduction means this article is not well framed not worth reading you should get the very clear cut idea what was the research problem was there many mention of the previous studies now these previous studies are very important go to the cross references and these studies will help you further getting collection of more of your references for your molecule or for your therapy why was this study performed okay so you will get idea why was this study performed what was the gap what was not done till now so that authors have invested so much time and resources to do this why was this study performed what were the aims and objectives of the study and then in the later while reading the results you will be able to connect whether the authors were able to achieve their objectives or aims or not and what was the study hypothesis so while reading introduction don't if you have selected ki i have to read this article then read it critically don't read it just for the sake of reading okay just for the sake of finding a point for a visual aid because that will not help you discussing this thing with your doctors so suppose if i read this thing very critically if i went to a doctor clinic i can very very i have more confidence discussing this article certain a latest article has come which has answered this gap which was not previously answered in any of the studies and they have done this study with this objective and their main findings were so doctor will feel ki yes this person who has come from head office is making sense he is not just repeating what the be is repeating over the time in the visual aid so introduction you answer these five questions and you are you will understand whether my part is done coming to the next section is the materials and methods which give you the technical details of the experimentation when the authors frame what they want to do they tell you how they have done so they tell you how did the researcher attempt to answer the research question how they are doing it how the sampling was done which set of patients they have taken okay and if it is a placebo control trial or if they are study a molecule against a competitor's molecule how the grouping is done most of the bias in the studies is from the grouping point you see some of the articles they are highly biased towards your uh, towards one molecule they will take more subjects in one molecule and they will take less lesser number of subjects in the another group another arm okay and then your statistical significance is biased towards one group so you have to understand so if it started with the 100 subjects or maybe 500 subjects how many they have taken in the placebo how many subjects they have taken in the uh, your interested molecule and how many they have taken in the competitor molecule so that gives a fair idea whether the study is biased unbiased so here you will know what were the inclusion and the exclusion criteria 
so suppose they have excluded the adult population they have excluded the people with any coexisting disease like uh, diabetes or like hypertension they have excluded and in the clinical practice most of the patients they may have the a diabetic patient may have hypertension problem he may have a problem of uh, hyperlipidemia and if you are doing research on the pure diabetic patient excluding the hypertensive and this one this probably may not make much of the clinical sense so if you know better about the inclusion criteria you can talk about the doctor doctor in this article they have done not only on that purely diabetic population they have uh, they have framed the question in a very real clinical setting where the uh, diabetic patients who were hypertensive also who were having high lipid levels also were also included in the study and which mimics your clinical practice what procedures were followed which uh, okay so how they have studied which all outcomes they have measured and what are the statistical methods they have employed to answer those question so once you have studied all these things in detail friends this will help you discuss these materials and uh, these uh, points very confidently inside the clinic or in your uh, meeting presentations the brand meeting presentations where you can you are uh, where you are presenting a case on using a certain research article to design your quarter theme now this is the portion we all are very much interested and after reading the introduction usually we jump to the results section without reading material and method so we usually jump to the results section and we try to find out is there any table is there any graph or a figure which i can use my visual aid or which i use in my literature okay now this is a section we all are interested in so we have to understand what are all the key findings so in any article published there are many findings some of them are statistically significant some of them are non statistical uh, some are, uh, are not significant that way so you have to find what are all the things they have find uh, what usually i do is whenever i while reading an article i make small notes also so that gives me idea what was the research question what outcomes they were measuring and what are the their findings so that will uh, give me a very good mental map how to use these results while communication then are the results reliable reliable means if they are statistically significant okay are they valid whether they have measured what it is supposed to measure okay now friends where one very important point is some of the times uh, i have a setback in the clinic when i uh, usually you know uh, present a case to the doctor and say sir these results are statistically significant he used to tell me friend this is statistically significant but this is not clinically significant i'll share one example with you uh, a certain time i was talking about uh, an anxiolytic in a clinic where i was saying sir this uh, brand uh, this particular molecule has a statistically significantly it reduced uh, anxiety as well as comorbid depression on a ham a and ham d score okay so how how much is statistical significant it was very good it was within more than 99% significant now the thing was it was not clinically significant for the doctor why it was not clinically significant because it has reduced it from the 4 to 3 from the 4 scale to 3 scale now from 4 to 3 reduction is a 25% reduction but if you talk about uh, the scale per se 4 and 3 both lie within the moderate symptoms so from 4 to 3 the patient earlier was also moderate now also he is in the moderate category so even if it is reducing it 25% okay it is not making sense clinically so tables and graphs are they easy to comprehend so we have to you know you, uh, read this section and try to find answer to these questions by reading the results section now this is very important section the discussion section where the author discuss the findings and the author's view and connection to the whatever the available findings are there now this is a section where i want all uh, where i usually invest most of the time reading because this gives me an idea about uh, uh the uh, about the outcome of this study in relation to what has been done earlier sometimes it supports the uh, study done earlier you must have read ki our results are in line with the uh, with the study done by this thing so i can club all those reference article and i can make uh, something like uh, endorsed by all those important studies so did the results answer the research question what were the authors interpretation of the data were the results different or similar to other studies 
and what were the strengths and limitations of the study so we need to find out the answers to these questions while reading the discussion section invest much of your time in discussing in reading this discussion section fine so uh, uh, rajnish bhai yes please yeah so sure. what yeah so what i will do is friends once i have told you the critical reading of a research article now i will move forward for, forward to show you the live demonstration of certain search engines other than the pubmed pubmed hacks i will come to later we all must have used some of these common platforms like pubmed google scholar science direct and clinical trials dot gov now i am showing you few of the trials other than that now can you see my uh, browser is my browser visible ha ha bilkul dikh raha dikh raha okay so friends uh, this is one thing uh, which is uh, called as a core you have to simply type the core core.ac.uk now this is the world's largest collection of open access research papers all research papers that you can access free of cost so say for example migraine you search it here core and this will give you all get pdf okay so this core is a, a directory where you can get all the research articles free of cost i mean the open access articles it has certain okay. filters yeah which year to which year you want it has language filters you can explore this okay then you can uh, you can find from here see it has articles not only from pubmed i am highlighting the repository section if you want what are the articles available in for this topic in elsevier okay so it has different directories for example if i select the springer so these are the articles available for migraine okay and these are the articles from springer which are available free of cost and then you can sort them by relevance or by recency if i sort them by recency i will get the latest article on the top one okay so Wonderful. one search yeah one search engine is core apart from pubmed so friends i cannot explain i mean i cannot go in depth for each of the search engine i am giving you the idea so that you can further explore it another is the science.gov now this is very interesting if you have not used it try to use it it will help you making most of uh, some of your you know patient related material also now nice science.gov is a us federal science initiative it gives you all authentic data which is either done or under study in the federal science database right for example i i am using the similar research term which is the migraine and i am searching here right so this is the dashboard that you will get once you search it now see on the left panel you can see the topics and the visual okay i am coming to the topic part so it is giving you headache uh, related and something now click on this visual button if you click on this visual button you can see that uh, some how these articles what their database is classified they have 210 studies on migraine for chronic migraine they have 63 treatment related they have 137 studies in the us federal science based database migraine and headache they have 205 and the good part is if i have to enter into any section for example i enter into treatment part i can simply go from here the treatment part so if i go to yeah so if i go to the treatment part it is again giving me it is further slicing it which part you want to look where is has a response if you want to search it for episodic migraine you want to search it for the symptoms for the preventive migraine chronic migraine treatment options okay so it is further slicing you can further you know dig deeper into it so if i go to episodic migraine i click it so 
prevention toxin risk factor american headache society like this means i am just giving you one example okay you can for your therapy for your molecule you can use this uh, use this uh, uh, thing and you can directly you know uh, filter narrow down your option and reach to the article now focus uh, is my cursor visible rajnish bhai yes yes it's it's visible yeah now here you see i further again go to my original search of migraine because i have narrowed it down now this is interesting now you see ki uh, yeah here in the panel the three options are there text multimedia and public access now public access is the open research articles along with the data uh, along with the thing for example public access repository doe department of energy pages so like this they will give you so these are uh, these are some of these are not captured in pubmed friends so you get some of the articles which your competitors are not getting by accessing this section mm -hmm. and very interesting in this section is the multimedia section you go to multimedia section you will find videos for example overcoming challenges the medline plus videos and tools now here you will get an idea of designing certain video or some tools related for your patients through your brand window that will help in maintaining the migraine diary for your patients or the pain diary for your patients okay because migraine you know once you, the patient reaches here uh, uh, sorry i don't have to teach migraine but uh, <laughs> you can mention Uh, that is the problem of a brand manager rajnish bhai <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you enter into the multimedia uh, and you can find out these all uh, things like breast feeding in migraine so this is this will give you an idea of the multimedia is available and in text if you will go it give you a google based search so text is not it's like a google based search but more organized migraine migraine with aura migraine headaches migraine resources so what you want to search you can follow from his this page so friends explore this uh, platform science.gov i found it very interesting wonderful wonderful platform both core and science.gov and especially yeah. that visual that that visual was something new yeah this visual one no, this is very interesting yes this helps rajnish bhai in actually reaching to the search point which i am searching for okay yeah now coming to the next one now this is something new uh, for me and uh, this i have started using just recently this is a semantic scholar this organizes your search for example okay. i use the same search term oh sorry no now uh, see this one once you find the migraine you search the migraine you found some mm. 65000 results for migraine not important ki how many results are there anyway i am not going to read 65000 mm. okay now we have to immediately come to the right part the migraine disorders mm. it gives you what is a migraine and explore topic okay now if i come to this explore topic section mm. okay now once i explore the topic it give me two options you want to narrow your search or you want to broaden your search in migraine okay. there are many types of headache suppose i want to target for my molecule i want to search something for the cluster headache okay so which all types of migraine you can go you can narrow down your search you can expand your search you can further broaden your search with the more cns disorder or vascular headaches or nervous system disorder this is one now if you look to uh, left part where paper overview is there now you see the reviews are organized the latest review is on the top 2019 now see this one this review they have uh, this is in the chronological order reverse so it it has you know how this platform works it it works in a chronological manner it uh, sorts article in a chronological order for you so uh, you will get the latest on the top right so this is what is a semantic scholar is so they have further the number of articles their database is very less as of now they are enriching their database this is the beta version okay. now 
another platform which i want to discuss with you is very interesting i hope some of you must have used it this is microsoft academic okay so microsoft academic is another very interesting tool uh, search uh, engine okay so i use the same term migraine why i am typing the spelling wrong i don't know migraine yeah so don't worry by this chinese one okay so first thing is what i do is you get the results like this i sort it by the newest first okay so you see the 2021 article you have got means accepted in 2020 but it is going to be published in 2021 so you must be that fast wonderful okay. now uh, the best is yet to come rajnish bhai now you see here uh, to the left panel you see you have to explore the left panel hmm the left panel if you see here comes the top institutions oh okay. so if i filter from the harvard university now you see 2020 i got an article published in jama which was done by the harvard university uh, uh, researchers so hmm. now see if i communicate something to my doctor that sir recently it is done so you know you are giving weightage to your search you are getting uh, unless published uh, researchers doing research somewhere in the world and using that research rather than using the uh, that you can use the research from the esteemed institutions and you can use that as a communication point doctor a research published in the pub done by the researchers of harvard published in hmm. 2020 jama neurology so that catches the attention of the doctors okay yes so this is one and uh, if you look to the right panel uh, see left panel i am not i have told you the important point rest everything you can explore on your own the time if you will see so uh, from how much time to what time you want to search for example if i select 2001 so it will show me for the last 20 years okay so 2001 to 2000 so you can choose from the time which time window you want to search the articles okay so then you have the top authors top journals you have the top institutions then you can narrow down yeah me sh descriptor is one thing which i will tell you towards the end of my presentation how we can use me sh descriptors for my search me sh is medical science heading okay okay so me sh descriptor i will tell you in the end it will otherwise confuse the whole session okay yeah now very interesting in this is the right panel uh if you see the top topics you see here view more hmm. no one minute i did something okay one minute ha huh? yeah yeah to the right portion if you see the migraine here you see the parent topic child topics and related topics hmm. so parent topic means if you want to broaden your search and if you want to narrow down your search so here you get all options like the frequent headache headache diary occipital nerve means it classifies your topic into so many sub topics that you can directly move to the sub topic you are looking for hmm okay sometimes we don't know what we are looking for actually for example if someone is looking for here and if someone comes across the word headache diary this is something new for many so they will come to know that yes yeah, something is there which is called as a headache diary so what is this headache diary they can go and further explore so mobile phone hmm. headache diary and there are many apps which can be used nowadays for migraine management okay so this is this helps you you know uh, gives you this food for thought foot for further explore for your brands absolutely so these are few uh, search engines and one last which i want to tell you is the science direct if you have used it okay if you have not used it now this is another interesting tool other than pubmed okay. so i go to the home of the science direct now this is the science direct platform i usually directly go to the advanced search option and in the advanced search we go to show all fields now uh, i usually start from here the title abstract 
So whatever the keyword I am using, it has to be in a title or the abstract. Okay. Then I have which type of article I am looking for. Am I looking for a review article or a case series? What I am looking for, I can select and I can search. Right. So it will give you the review article for my grades. So like this, you can use the advanced search tool for Science Direct from Science Direct. Then in the left panel, it is self uh, self explanatory. You can refine it by you can see twenty twenty one five reviews are there for migraine. Right. So uh, this all what you can use in the left portion uh, from Lancet Neurology. You have thirty three reviews on migraine. So this is how you can show the Science Direct platform. We have we have one one uh, one feedback from Mr. Neeraj Sharma. He says that there is one more uh, search engine that is Sci Hub. S C I dash hub. I will tell you about this. Sci Hub is actually not a search engine. Uh, this is my surprise. I will be revealing in the end. Okay. You can download actually any article from this thing, uh, provided you have a DUI of the uh, article. I will explain yes. it. I will demonstrate it, Rajesh. Yes, yeah. Also, there is one question from uh, Mr. Venu Gopal. He says that can you tell the importance of Vancouver style difference? Which medical uh, department is existing upon? Uh, yes, see, uh, uh, references have many style. Usually, when Vancouver style is usually most important when we are submitting an article for publication. Okay, mm. uh, so because every article they have a fixed style. So Vancouver style, they ask for the author names first. They ask for the title first. Uh, afterwards, and then they ask for the. Uh, name of the journal and the publication date. Now, mm. why nowadays people want Vancouver style is because earlier we used to mention just the uh, in the downside the visual aid we usually mention uh, something like the article name and the mm. year. And uh, uh, probably we, uh, if somebody wants, they cannot reach to that article through that. Now, Vancouver style article it gives you the complete idea. I will show you one Vancouver style reference example. Okay, so it gives you, you know a complete idea of who is the author, what is the complete title. This is one. So it gives you the whole idea of what is. Uh, yeah, see this one. This is a complete reference in a Vancouver style. So it gives you the list of all the authors, then the title, then the subtitle, the edition, the place of publication, and the year of publication. So it gives you, you know, the complete idea of uh, where it was published, who published it, and when it was published. Yeah. Yes, Rajneesh Bhai. Right, right, right. Got it. Yes. So, uh, likewise, we have many search engines, but I would have, I have selected these five for, you know, for today's discussion. Okay. Now, uh, now I uh, want to move further to some PubMed hacks that are definitely helpful. Yes. Okay. So, I start with, uh, uh, this my PubMed is visible. Yes. It's, it's, it's visible. And you can see in my PubMed, I am uh, logged in. First, I log out and I will show you how the page comes first. Okay. So I go to PubMed directly. See, this is the PubMed uh, page that you will sure. see if you will type PubMed. Mm -hmm. Now you have two options. You can search it uh, by login or without login also. But it is always better to have your own login page. Why? I will tell you. See, I am logging in with my Google account. You can simply log in through your Google account. Okay. Okay. So. Now, so see, is, I have logged there, in. Is, okay. is there any uh, importance of Vancouver style referencing? 
see importance is i already mentioned because it gives you the complete idea of who published it and the complete title along with it when it was published and uh, in which journal it is published it gives you whole detail earlier okay. no there are in other reference style what we usually do is we keep the initial we keep only one author name and we put at all hmm okay but in vancouver style we usually need to keep all the authors hmm okay so it gives a exhaustive list four or five authors i don't exactly have the idea how many is there but four or five authors we need to keep in the vancouver style followed by the title followed by the uh, journal the uh, volume so it gives you in this reference style a reader is easy to make uh, from the reference when it was published and where it was published and who published it and the complete title actually okay now coming to the pubmed part so you log in and i make the search of say migraine now this is my search of migraine okay now friends uh, i go to this portion where my account is written and i go to my dashboard now see this one this is my dashboard now in my dashboard you see the saved searches are there mm -hmm. if i go to duloxity you see Seven days now. This is one of the molecule I am handling. So seven days ago, a new article on etizolam has come. Okay. Six days ago, eight new articles of olanzapine has come. Hmm. Okay. So if I go to any molecule, it keeps on saving your search. It keeps on building your database automatically. Okay. Okay. If I go to duloxetine, so it will show what are all the latest articles which it is showing the latest articles which has come. so making your own page uh, own login id will help you going to this uh, whatever you will search no it will automatically upgrade that say search then the recent activity of your search that all logs and uh, will be saved here right mm -hmm. now this is one thing in pubmed which is very interesting another thing is suppose uh, i am uh, i use a molecule say valproic acid valproic acid now this is very important the create alert which you can see you go to create alert uh name what in what name you want to search is say epilepsy is the broad name search term will be valproic acid now would you like email updates of new search results obviously yes what is the frequency you want so i usually put it to daily so whenever the latest article comes i get the daily mail uh, the mail on the same day mm. so what is the report format you want in the mail suppose i want abstract i kept the abstract format so okay. the abstract comes to my mail so i will see ki whether i have to go to pubmed to read it or not send at most 50 items why to limit okay and i save this thing okay so what i have done is i have given instruction to pubmed but this you can only do if you are uh, logged in you cannot do it without logging in okay okay so what i have done is i have created an alert okay oh i have created a wrong alert well proic spelling was wrong anyways uh, so i have created an alert and instructed the pubmed that whenever a new article of valproic acid will come it has to reach to my mail id daily whenever the day it is published i'll get yes hmm so this is one thing another thing which i want all of uh, uh, us to pay attention are the boolean characters use of and or and not in search i'm giving you one example okay i want to search diabetes okay and my obje uh, objective is to see the uh, uh, objective is uh, diabetes and obesity say for example okay mm. i want in the title i want i want all studies which have st uh, studied diabetes and obesity together mm. okay so if i will type capital and 
and i will type obesity and if i will search no i do something is wrong one minute diabetes and obesity now you see your uh, search is refined all your titles mm. are obesity and type 2 diabetes obesity insulin and type 2 diabetes obesity and diabetes so this and is very useful now see i want to see diabetes and obesity and those patients who have the problem of hypertension also so this mm. and will you know further narrow down your search now whatever the titles will come they will show you hypertension obesity and diabetes the link of these three hypertension okay. obesity and diabetes see hypertension it has already taken as a blood pressure mm -hmm. so this is the importance of using and okay now i am showing you another example diabetes and i have taken a bracket obesity or now you see you just keep in mind that we have 26700 results when we type diabetes and one minute obesity we have some 113000 results okay now mm -hmm. diabetes and obesity or sorry we are boolean characters you have to type in capital okay obesity or over weight now see obesity sometimes the authors uh, may not be using the word obesity they may be using the word overweight patients or something mm. like this so or gives you means diabetes with obesity or with overweight mm. so it gives an option mm. now see from the 1 lakh the results have increased to 3 lakh mm. means there are certain articles where other than obesity overweight was used so i am giving for example diabetes and hypertension or high blood pressure hmm i guess we understood right yes high blood pressure so or gives you an idea whether we don't know which author has used high blood pressure or hypertension these are the two commonly used terms so hmm. this will help me capturing any article which has used hypertension or high blood pressure okay yeah now last is uh, not i want diabetes and obesity but this patient should not have hypertension means this study should not have mention of high blood pressure okay. because my molecule probably it is not suitable for high blood pressure whatever maybe you can define your objective so diabetes and obesity not hypertension means it will exclude any search in which the title or abstract has hypertension or high blood pressure fine so these are the three terms which we usually use diabetes and obesity and or and not and or not fine so next in the series is uh, using asterisk sign okay. for example yeah for example duloxy in now toxic and i put asterisk sign after that okay now what is the importance of this asterisk sign it is called as truncation now the importance okay. of this asterisk sign is it will include everything that starts with toxic toxicity toxicology okay toxic mm -hmm. reaction means everything that starts with uh, toxic toxicity toxicology everything it will include okay so you can broaden your search because we don't know which is the author has used probably toxicity mm -hmm. or toxicology what they have used so you can use the asterisk sign so asterisk sign is used when you have when you are getting less number of results for your uh, to meet your objective and you want to broaden your search and to find more of the results then you we usually use the asterisk sign
Okay. Right. So these are the three important PubMed hacks I would have uh, uh, wished to tell you. One is make your login ID. Don't do PubMed because uh, it will keep on automatically updating your search. Second is create and your alert for your therapy or your molecule. You will be always updated. Third is use of the Boolean characters and or and not. Fourth is using the asterisk sign. This serves the most of our purpose. These four things. Okay. Okay. Great, great. Now, coming to the next part, I think we have two more things pending. The next part is the research gate. Okay. Now, friends, research gate is very, very important uh, to keep yourself updated and to keep yourself connected to the authors of, who have published the article. Okay. Now, this is the researchgate.net. To log in, I have already logged in. You have to log in through your LinkedIn profile. They have it. You can't log in through your uh, this thing, but you can log in through your LinkedIn profile. Okay. Right. So that I am not investing time. We already we all can do that. Now, okay. now very important in this is suppose I found an, a very interesting article in PubMed. Where is PubMed now? Yeah. Suppose I found this article very interesting. Uh, maybe uh -huh. duloxetine in uh, this thing is very interesting to me. Uh -huh. I tie, I take a copy of this thing. Uh, say for example, this one. Okay, uh -huh. why I have taken this one? Because free full text is not available for this article. So uh -huh. I have to search this. I have copy. Now see, the same article has come here. Okay. Uh -huh. Now, you can see request full text the full text is not available the full text mm -hmm. you can request here you can go for request full text want to include and message so it says that automatically i am interested in your research you can provide full text for it amit Khanna. now here what you can do is i already suppose have the full text of this i don't want the full text of this yeah uh, probably because we have other area uh, sites from where you can download the full text but i want to connect with this author okay so I want to tell him that I am interested. Could you provide the full text for it? Further, could you please explain the results in detail? Hmm. And I send it. Hmm. Now what has happened? Now from my side, a mail will go to this author. He will get key. Yeah, somebody has asked, somebody is interested. Now, these, uh, the thing is, these authors are very, you know, uh, nobody in the world ap uh, appreciate much of their efforts. Uh, I mean, uh, they are very really? happy when, when somebody gives them a mail. Ki, yeah, I am very interested in your work. Can you please explain? So they get very emotional and they share much of their, uh, they feel very happy sharing the information with you. Right. So this is one advantage where you can connect. This is one way. Now, another way which, which uh, I usually do is, this is one thing. Suppose in publication, I type the Sanad trial. This is one of the trials. Right. Now, you see here, yeah, the full, full text is available. You can download. I am already following it. So, this is the option. You can follow this trial. Now, the advantage of following this trial is, whenever this article will be used as a cross reference anywhere you will get a mail for this means somewhere in the world is somebody is doing a research and he has used a senate trial means definitely you are going to get an article is published on epilepsy and you are definitely going to get uh, updated information about it so you have to follow uh, these things you can follow these things then another very important is now see these are the authors you can go to one author, say for example. Once you go to the author now, it will give you the details about that author. Yeah. So it will give you the uh, detail that she is the author, the experience and everything. Okay. Research overview. Now, once you start, you can follow the author also whenever the new public now usually what happens in a university or in a science no a one author they have usually one or at the maximum two areas of interest 
Now, this author has done a very critical, very important trial that is a Senate trial. Now, whenever a new trial or a new research will be done by this article, uh, by this author and published, you will get an update. Okay. So you will be updated. Your, you will be updated with the activities of this author who is work, working exclusively in epilepsy area. So these are the two advantages which I found uh, networking with the research gate. Okay. And the third biggest is suppose if you are uh, I use I have done this recently. Uh, uh, there is a ham A score uh, scale for uh, anxiety. And another score is ham D for depression. But okay. this measures 20 parameters to come to the conclusion. Now, mm. suppose one parameter is uh, guilt conscious in depression. Mm. I want exclusive. I don't want the comprehensive result. My molecule duloxetine, suppose it can, it reduces the guilt consciousness in the patients. Mm. I want what? how many patients have responded to that particular parameter, that guilt. Wala. So I mm. have networked with the author and I asked him, Ki, I want, I do not the complete data. Can you please share with me that exclusive data for the number of patients who have the guilt conscious increase and how duloxetine worked in reducing that guilt conscious. And I received the details of that article. And then I asked permission from him to use it in uh, my promotion, which I fortunately got it. So you got data beyond your publication also by networking in research case. So these are a few advantages of uh, registering yourself in research gate. So Rajneesh Bhai, I am towards the end with the last thing that is the Sci Hub. So friends, this is my last thing. Now, uh, any article that you want to download, okay. Suppose I have searched in, no, after this, I will take on MESH terms also. One quick example of MESH terms. Now, uh, suppose uh, I came across this article, Deloxetine Injection in 364 Dogs. Okay. But you see, the full text is not available for this article. Now, what I will do is, uh -huh. I will copy this DOI part. And I go to SciHub. Now, SciHub, you see, right now the working is SciHub.se. If you search only SciHub in Google, there are many links you will get, but the only working link now is SciHub.se. You, I have typed that DOI here and I go to open part. A lady will come saying you hello and you will get to see the full text article of this thing. Need not to pay anything anywhere. So you can simply download this article. Okay, and you can say. So SciHub is a very uh, useful tool if you want to download articles uh, uh, where the full text is not available to you. So remember this one, SciHub.se. Now coming to the last part is uh, MESH terminology. Friends, when we go to PubMed, na, PubMed is actually one thing. I will show you, I will show you through PubMed only. Why I am going again and again to PubMed is because we all are used to PubMed. Actually, PubMed is one of the things from the National Library of Medicine. This is the broad one, the National Library of Medicine, the parent body. I go to the National hmm. Library of Medicine. So here you see all databases. Here hmm. you can find three books to read. Okay, so they have many things and PubMed is one of them. You will see PubMed is one of them. Okay, those working in protein clusters and examples, they go to the protein and the genomic structures. They have the whole gene library here, the genome and gene sequences. Okay, so this is the exhaustive list. So one can go and browse whatever is interesting. Now what I am going to is the MESH terminology. Now this is one thing very interesting. And in MESH, I go to say epilepsy. Now, a lot of things will come. You need not to worry about what is the search result. Go to any search result. Okay. You go to any search result. And downside, you will see a big tree. 
See also, you see from here you can see scissors. Hmm. So this is called as a medical science heading. Medical science heading is the classification, how PubMed understands the classification of a disease. So scissor is the broad term, it, which comes under the nervous system category, the brain diseases, epilepsy. So partial epilepsy has these many types. So these all things are there. Okay. So you will understand hmm. how PubMed understands that disease. Once you understand how PubMed understands that disease, you can easily, you know, go to the push, you can easily instruct PubMed to search what you want. For example, mm. I want to search the post-traumatic epilepsy. Okay, epilepsy after some accident or something like that. So I'm going to post-traumatic epilepsy. Mm. Now see, every heading has its own number. This is a tree number. We are, we are not interested into this thing. I'm just telling you, for example, and this is the ID. So D004834 is an ID for post-traumatic epilepsy. Mm. Okay. And these are all the different types of post-traumatic epilepsies which are there. Mm. So post-traumatic, they have all these terms listed in the PubMed. Now, how it is going to help me is I add this to search builder. Mm. So now my term is epilepsy post-traumatic as defined by medical science heading. And then I search PubMed. Now, whatever article I will get is as per all the terms of MESH who have defined the epilepsy, post-traumatic. So you will okay. get all articles related to post-traumatic epilepsy. Now, it will not show you useless results because you have used the MESH terminology. Hmm. Right. So this is the advantage of using MESH uh, search. These all things are very elaborative. One need to further explore these terms, how it fits to your therapy, how it fits to your molecule and how you can use these tools, you know, effectively. So I guess uh, this is all done from my side. We have covered. So this is my final message, friends. We have we all are reading, but we have to read with method and purpose because reading is to aid us in thinking. So, thank you, Rajneesh Bhai. Thank you to PMT India team. We can take a few questions if they are available. Sure, sure. If if there are few uh, questions, uh, uh, then I because already a lot of people are there appreciating what what uh, you have talked about, Amit. And uh, just one thing that uh, is this is this is this kind of a dark net sci hub? Yeah, it is a type of a dark net. Yes. Okay, okay, okay. Any questions, audience? If if you have, uh, please uh, you can ask. Please repeat mesh search. Jolant is saying mesh search. If you can repeat. Yes, yes, I can do that. Okay. Any other question, audience? Please. Uh, after this, if you want to have a look at our videos, uh, you want to have a look at this presentation again. You can all subscribe to our YouTube channel that is PMT India Learning and over there you can get uh, this video along with this video. The, uh, all our old videos are also there. So you can just have a look at that. Amit, if you can just talk about uh, mesh search. Sure. My uh, screen is visible, Rajneesh Bhai? <coughs> not, not now. <coughs> yes, now no, it's, no, it's uh, showing. Okay, one minute. I stopped the sharing. I have to share it again. <laughs> okay. Any specific site uh, for providing clinical trials? Neeraj is asking. Neeraj has a question. Any yes, it is also it's also there. It's also there. I'll tell you. Uh, clinical trials .gov is one. Okay. Yeah, I'll show you. Uh, uh, let me take MESH first. Hmm? Okay, so, so you can all connect with Mr. Amit. He's on LinkedIn also. He's on Facebook also. You can connect with him over there, and uh, I'm sure one to one he can he can help you whenever possible. Uh, so we we go to NCBI, we go to MASH, Medical okay. Science Heading. Your, okay. your screen uh, is not it's, it's it's not sharing. It's not shared. No. For it my was, side, it is. Okay. okay, from my uh, side, it is showing. Yes, yes, now, now it's not there. 
you can see my mesh screen right yes ncbi welcome to ncbi welcome to ncbi mesh yes. here MESH i am right yes so i have so taken mesh and this mm -hmm. time i use that you want to me use the different example this time for example migraine or diabetes ah uh, yeah sure sure so i use say for example diabetes this time so right and just go to first search don't worry about what are the search results okay go yes. to the first search so first search na no, it will give you the tree downside mm -hmm. so this is the tree mm -hmm. okay so so nutritional and metabolic diseases is the big thing under that comes metabolic under that comes glucose metabolism disorder and under that comes diabetes mellitus mm -hmm. so it gives you ki how they have organized the disease mm -hmm. okay so mesh because pubmed has to have a system to show you the results mm -hmm. okay so this mm -hmm. is their system so suppose i want to search uh, about uh, uh, pre diabetic state or say any example gestational diabetes mm -hmm. i have clicked to gestational diabetes mm -hmm. and you see these are all the gestational diabetes this is the unique id and these are all the pregnancy induced pregnancy gestational these are all covered under the same id so mm -hmm. if you will search anything related here they will show you results for all these things six uh, topics six search topics so simply come to the point which you are searching for example you see our landing page right now right now is diabetes gestational and simply here you click add to search builder so diabetes gestational mesh it will automatically take and you go to pubmed so this is a very useful tool to narrow down your search so i am because right. if you will type diabetes now you will get millions of uh, pages nowadays millions of articles but now all your articles that you will be getting is about the gestational diabetes gestational diabetes wonderful because right. it identif whenever we submit any article to pubmed na author has to give mesh id to that okay so once the author gives mesh id that's how the pubmed show, uh, decides which result to show and which not to show okay oh, yeah right right okay so a lot of people are actually they are, they are, they are appreciating you amit uh, for the in depth knowledge that you have shared today on this platform It's, thank it's you rajesh bhai it's all you it shows it shows your command on the topic and uh, you know it's it's always good to learn uh, that there are so many ways because you know this this is not only about scientific references this is about that as a brand manager how can you keep yourself ahead in with terms of uh, competition that is there in the market so so if, like like he has talked about migraine so in migraine maybe there are thousand of brands but how do you keep yourself ahead maybe this is one of the tools that will help you to keep yourself ahead because your team will be the first one which is going with the latest references to your doctors and hence the edge that you will be getting over the other brands and it will ultimately show reflect on your sales also of your brands so thank you amit it was it was a wonderful session thank you so much for taking thank time you, i would uh, just like to inform that amit has just recovered from covid but he has still been very kind to uh, come and speak for all of us so thank you amit we wish you very good health thank you rajnish bhai thank you so much and i wish all be uh, all best wishes to pmt india learning i personally learned a lot from pmt india group and from pmt india learning platform also from that bharat natyam wala the thing we have done how a dance yes. can you know add to your life uh, it i mean very amazing yes. platform thank you so yes. much rajnish bhai right thank, thank you. you and i would also like to thank our uh, broadcasting uh, sponsors which is uh, magica health they have been very kind to come forward and help us with this initiative of to broadcast our webinars so, so thank you thank you magica health team thank you so much you can all get in contact with them they are they 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 provide this webinar services and a lot of other uh, services to the pharmaceutical companies magica health please get in touch with them so thank you uh, uh, neeraj you can yes uh, you can uh, contact details amit khanna is available on linkedin and facebook you can get in touch with them otherwise you can see a number scrolling below that is 999987679 just ping there and uh, we'll be sharing uh, amit's uh, 
email id and number with you so that you can get in touch with him right so thank you everyone for joining us on a sunday morning and uh, wish you a very happy sunday so thank you thank you rajesh bhai thank you uh, so thank you all on attending this session thank you